Hi, Leanne Maxwell with Panther City Partners here, and I wanted to take a moment to record a video and chat with y'all about how to revive your motivation. You know, during this time of academic disruption and academic transition um, and staying home and learning from home, um, it can start to feel like, um, why should I even keep going? Why should I do this? And so I wanted to chat a little bit about motivation and how you can revive your motivation at this point in the semester. You know, any time in a semester after spring break, as you get into that home stretch of the semester, um, a lot of people start to feel like, ugh. I have so much more to do, but there's no much more time or I'm done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. And so already you're kind of feeling like you're less motivated. But now when you're not going to class and you're not seeing your classmates and you're not seeing your professors, you can even feel less motivated to get things done. So let's chat a little bit about how you can um, stay motivated. So I'm going to share my screen with you. I have done this presentation before and I start with a whole presentation on on getting motivated in the first place. So just to kind of recap, getting motivated in the first place requires breaking projects and assignments into smaller chunks. So looking at an assignment, you have the big overwhelming assignment and what kind of small chunks can you break it into so that you can get it done. Using the 10 minute rule can be really, really powerful. So a lot of times um, an assignment is scary or overwhelming because it seems so big or so daunting. And so the 10 minute rule says that when the assignment is first assigned, you sit down and you work on it for 10 minutes. A lot of times um, it's scary to start an assignment because it feels so big. So just working on it for 10 minutes will force you to like get some of it done. And then it can be a lot easier later to come back to it because you're like, oh, I've started that. Now I just need to keep going. But also what can happen is you can say, oh, at the end of the 10 minutes, that thing wasn't so bad. Maybe I can keep going and I can get more work done. So either you're, you're starting it so it's easier to come back to later or you're starting it and you're going to keep going on it because it's really not as bad as you think it is. So the 10 minute rule can be a really great way to get started on something um, so that it's easier to keep going. Um, setting study goals for each session is really important. I've talked about this so many times, but when you sit down for a study session, you really should take the first five minutes of your study hour and be very specific about a to-do list. What specifically do I want to accomplish during this study session? That's going to get you motivated because you will know what to do. You can look over at your to-do list and you can say, yes, I'm going to do this next. Um, and finally, getting motivated, um, you should reward yourself, you know, when you've accomplished a task. So whatever reward looks right to you, does that mean spending some online time with friends? Does that mean reading a book for fun or watching your favorite episode of a TV show or getting a snack or going outside for a walk, whatever it looks like for you to reward yourself, that can be a really great motivation. I had a student once who told me that um, she would put an M&M at the bottom of each page she was reading so that when she got to the bottom of the page, she would reward herself with a single M&M and that kept her motivated. She was able to read lots of pages because she knew she had that reward at the end of each page. Now, once you're motivated, um, we're not going to go back to goal setting. You want to stay motivated. So using both intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So an, an example of an extrinsic motivation would be that M&M at the bottom of the page. And the um, example of an extrinsic motivation, I mean, an intrinsic motivation would just be like that feeling of relief. Oh, I got that done. I feel better. So using both of those there's no one right way to do this y'all um we need to make it through the semester and if it's intrinsic motivation that keeps you going that's awesome and if it's extrinsic motivation that keeps you going that's awesome too you got to do what is going to help you get things done um adding variety you know doing a little bit of sociology and then doing a little bit of math and then breaking it up with a, a walk outside or some exercise you know doing some things that you can maybe you study in a different place than you used to study maybe one time you listen to music with words and the next time you listen to music without words you know whatever you can do to add a little bit of variety um, to your study habits can be really motivating because you can think oh yay i get to do something fun this time um, organizing a study group, you can do that online. You can FaceTime with a, a fellow classmate. You can um, WhatsApp video chat. You can, if you have Zoom or access to it, you can get a whole bunch of people together. Um, study groups don't have to go away. They just need to be virtual now.
keeping a schedule. I'm going to harp on this so much because keeping a schedule really can keep you motivated. You know, even in these crazy times of families all being at home together, parents are both home, kids are all home, um, having a schedule really does help keep us on track to get our things done each day. And it it really is um, a calming thing because it can seem like the day is endless. You know, when, when there's, when you don't have going out with friends or doing things with friends or even, you know, going to the movie theater um, as an option, days can just seem to last for a really long time. So when you schedule things out, you're breaking your day up, you're breaking that big day up into smaller chunks. So keeping a schedule is really good. You know, I know it sounds silly and I know that a lot of people think that this is real woo, but using positive self-talk is very powerful. So saying nice things to yourself, saying, I can get this done. I am, um, I'm going to be successful. Um, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to get this assignment completed. Any of those things that help make you feel better, you know, even like just today is finally a beautiful day. So I'm just saying things to myself like, God, it's so nice that it's so pretty outside. Um, even though I'm not outside in it, I can look out my window right in front of me and see outside and just that, that positive um, self-talk and those positive reinforcements really do make you feel better. Um, staying motivated in order to stay motivated, you've got to give yourself breaks. You cannot just sit down with your nose to the grind for eight hours and do schoolwork. That is not realistic. It wasn't realistic before we were doing online and home learning, and it's not realistic now. You've got to give yourself many breaks. You can use those breaks to reward yourself um, with intrinsic or extrinsic motivation, but you can't just sit in front of your computer and work nonstop or sit with your books and work nonstop. You have to give yourself some breaks. So now um, we kind of talked a little bit about how you get motivated and stay motivated. But as I said, at this point in the semester, our motivation is really waning. So you want to have some time now to think about how you can revive that motivation. Reevaluate your goals. You set goals probably at the beginning of this semester. You may not have sat down and written them all out, but you set goals for yourself. Reevaluate those goals. Are they still realistic? Are they still applicable? Are they still measurable? Are they still timely? Are they still attainable? Some of us are going to need to adjust our goals a little bit, depending on our circumstances. You know, um, if I was really depending on face-to-face -face interaction with someone to get me through a calculus class and I don't have that anymore, I might need to reevaluate my goals um, as far as what grade I think I'm going to get in that class. Or I need to reevaluate my goals about how, if I'm not, if, if I was only spending one hour a week with someone, now maybe I need to spend two or three hours a week with someone virtually um, to get through that class. So reevaluate your goals can help you revive your motivation. It can also, when you reevaluate your goals, you also go back and look at them. So you might remind yourself about some goals that you had that you had kind of lost track of during this, this semester. And now when you go back and look at them, you can remind yourself, oh yeah, that was my goal. That can be my motivation. You want to add more choice to your life. Now, I do understand the, um, the contradictory nature of that right now. We don't have a ton of choices. We're staying at home. Um, we're not able to go out and do things. But adding choices to your life could mean, do I do my coursework in a different order? Um, do I change the way that I um, learn about a subject? You know, instead of just doing readings for my class, am I also listening to podcasts? Am I also watching videos from other professors? Am I doing some of my work in my bedroom and some in the kitchen and some in the living room and some at the dining room table? Um, am I going to sit outside sometimes and do some of my work? Where can you add choices to your life and add those in? even if it's not related to schoolwork. So can I um, change up what I'm having for dinner? Um, can I walk around the block in the opposite direction than I, have us than I usually go? Anytime you can add a little bit of choice to your life can help you feel a little bit more motivated because you're feeling more like you have ownership and control. And especially in this time where we're all feeling a little bit out of control, um, Adding some little things and choices to our life can be really beneficial. You want to relate your schoolwork to your life. So if you are in a biology class and y'all are talking about infectious diseases, 
this is a really great opportunity for you to relate that to your life and how you can see why social distancing or why staying home um, has an impact on um, the spread of those diseases. Um, you know, sometimes people think, well, I don't have something in my life to relate this to, but you might have listened to a podcast or you might have seen something on TV um, or it might be related to a movie or a book that you've read. So relating what you're learning in class to the things that you are in your everyday life. So I'm thinking about a communication studies class and thinking about some of the different um, theories are related to communication studies and how could I watch a movie or a TV show and see how those theories are playing out in that episode or in that movie. Um, thinking about it in that way, because what you're doing is you're creating new pathways for you to remember the information, but you're also just making it a little more fun. And so it's going to be, you're going to be more motivated that, by that because you're relating it to things that are interesting to you. Um, seek help. Okay. We are all in charting new territories and new, um, places and new things mentally, emotionally. Um, maybe we're not charting new territories physically, but we are all doing something new. So it's important that we seek help as soon as possible if we start to get stuck. That could mean reaching out to your professors, an academic advisor, a coach, a classmate, um, a tutor of some kind. Um, it could be reaching out to a mental health professional, um, just a friend to talk to. So not just seeking help for academic related issues, which definitely you should be doing, but also um, reaching out and seeking help for um, those mental health and just like social um, uh, things as well. So seeking help, the sooner you seek help, um, you can start to see a difference really quickly. You know, if you wait too long before you seek help academically, then you get to a point where you might be so far behind that it's hard to catch up. So right now, if you are struggling with this change in delivery or this change in um, the way content is, is given to you, get help immediately so that you can stay motivated. It'd be real easy right now for all of us to just crawl under our covers and stay in bed. Um, but hibernating is not going to help us through this academic disruption, and it is certainly not going to help you stay motivated. One client that I work with said, it's real fun to be able to do work from your bed, but also it does not keep you motivated. So yeah, we're probably all going to spend a lot more time resting these days, which is a good thing. But when we go into that place where we're hibernating and we don't see people um, even virtually or we don't interact with them and we just pull the covers up over our head, we are really doing a number on our motivation. So don't stay hibernated. Please get out there. Even, you know, obviously you can't go places, but you don't have to be alone completely right now. FaceTime with your friends, um, connect with classmates via uh, group texts or WhatsApp. Um, get on Facebook and create those study groups so that you're not so alone. You really want to prioritize your stuff right now. Um, you're going to have lots of information coming at you from your professors and you're going to need to get all that work done, but you really want to think about what needs to be done now versus what I can do in a little while. Because if you just look at everything, if it's just one big long to-do list, it's really overwhelming. So think about ABC. What are the tasks that need to get done today? Those are gonna have an A next to them. What are the things that I can put off until tomorrow? I'm gonna to put a B next to those. And C needs to be done sometime later this week. So prioritizing those, those options, um, those, those tasks on your to-do list so that you're not just looking at this big, huge line, long list of things that need to get done. Um, you can be motivated because you can see there's a clear delineation between what has to be done today versus what I can get done tomorrow. Paying attention and being aware of when your motivation breaks down can be really helpful. Maybe it's about two o'clock every day. You've worked for a few hours and at two o'clock you just kind of get into a slump. Well, you can notice that and you can say, okay, every day at two o'clock I'm going to give myself a 30 minute break. You know, having my kids home with me a lot more right now, um, 
they kind of get into a meltdown mode about 11, 1130. And I realized, oh, we need to be eating lunch earlier. Because I was trying to push lunch to like noon or one. But those kids, they need lunch a lot earlier. So when I recognized what was happening, I was able to make a shift. And so that changed the way that we were able to get through our day. Um, and their motivation stays higher because they're fed. <laughs> they don't melt down so much early in the day. So recognize when your motivation breaks down so that you can do something about it. While you don't want to sleep all the time, you do still need to get sleep. It is very easy right now um, to stay up really, really late and sleep in really, really late. Um, but that's not going to help your motivation. Go ahead and get into a regular routine. You know, keep a bedtime. Even though, yeah, you don't have any place to be tomorrow morning, you still should get up. I mean, you should still go to bed at a reasonable time so that you feel good the next day. Because we all get a real good chance right now to really work on our sleep cycles because we can't go anywhere. So we might as well go to bed at a decent hour and get up at a decent hour. That's going to make your waking hours way more productive because you won't be so tired and lethargic, but also it's going to make your sleeping hours better because you're going to get more sleep and you're going to get more of that restful sleep that you really need. Um, and not just those short, short bursts of sleep. So if you get on up, and get your stuff done during the daylight hours. Then in the evenings and at night, you can get into the good habit of a routine so you can get um, a lot of sleep. Um, Cause that's gonna be where a lot of your processing of the new information that you're learning is gonna happen. Our brains process a lot of information when we're asleep, but we need to get into that deep sleep and if we're sleeping only in little short bursts, we're not allowing our bodies to get enough rest to really get into that deep sleep. And therefore, we're not allowing our brains to process the information, which leads to not understanding it as well. So it all builds on each other. So if you get more sleep, you're going to understand the information that you're learning so much better. Take a moment and think back over these suggestions. What strategies will you try and how could you implement those strategies? So for me, it's really creating that bedtime routine. You know, I have one for my children, um, but it's real easy now that since I don't have to get up and be somewhere that I can stay up really late. Um, and so I'm working on that bedtime routine. Sticking to a schedule um, can be really, really helpful right now because I know that I'm gonna get stuff done. Um, and I have created a space to get it done. Um, and then I think that the last one that I really want us to focus on is not hibernating. Um, that's not going to help your motivation and it's not going to help you get through the end of the semester. So get out there virtually, get out there emotionally, be vulnerable, interact with the world and get your work done so that you can stay motivated and finish this semester really strong. Thank you so much for your time. Um, most of this information I got from a book called College Rules, How to Study, Survive, and Succeed in College. Um, it's one of my favorite books for college students. So if you haven't read it, now's a good time. You can get it um, um, on Amazon, but you can also get it on your Kindle. So this is a good time for you to go back and um, read about some strategies to make college a little more Easy, to make college a little easier as you move forward. But today, thank you for your time um, talking about motivation and how you can revive your motivation to get through the end of the semester, even with all of the academic disruptions and transitions and changes. Again, I'm Leanne Maxwell with Panther City Partners. Thanks so much for your time.